Another week, boys, and another twab. This week at Bungie, we've got some patch notes. And then we got the twab. First up, guys, Destiny 2 Hotfix 7.0.0.6. Activities, Dungeons and Raids, Root of Nightmares. Fix an issue where players are being locked out of the red border chest after the weekly reset. Fix an issue where focused light and focused darkness would not trigger in the Zoark encounter. Fix an issue where the sun blight enemies could be damaged through their shields by the colony exotic grenade launcher. Wow. They actually fixed it. Those clever little spiders have been reprimanded one more time. Fix an issue where players could equip ray mods without obtaining them first. Now Shattered Throne. Fix an issue where the dungeon node would not appear to some players. General. Fix an issue where Cabal Threshers were doing more damage than intended. Oh, thank God. I didn't know if it was a frame rate issue or what, but those Threshers were doing way too much damage. Fix an issue where the European Dead Zone node would not unlock for some players. Now gameplay and investments. Weapons. Fix an issue where the Winter Bind Exotic Glaive was big benefiting from other glaive damage increasing perks. My god, Bungie. First you killed it last week, and now you're just pissing on its grave. If you're wondering what they're talking about, close to melee, you could proc it with another glaive and then swap to winter bite, and that damage buff would transfer over. Granted, we tested the damage last week on winter bites, and it is substantially less than what it used to be. Now, fix an issue where the glaive melee feed kills were showing the projectile label. Fix an issue where the extra arc volley granted by two tail fox's exotic catalyst was not firing properly. Interesting. Fix an issue where some weapon mods were not available for some players. Now armor mods. Fix an issue where equipping too many passive armor charge benefits would deactivate artifact perks. Change in power finish to count as a finisher mod for purposes of mutual exclusivity. Now this mod can no longer be equipped alongside a finisher mod that also consumes armor charge stacks. Having the ability to generate and spin armor charge stacks on the same mod was creating conditions where latency would sometimes cause the perks to activate in an incorrect order. Additionally, when combined with stacked on stacks, Empowering finish was circumventing the basic armor charge mechanics too easily, resulting in generating too many orbs of power, ammo bricks, over shields, etc. Also, the untangler artifact perk will no longer trigger melee perks. Now, localization fixed the issue introduced in 7.0.0.5 that reverted Mandarin voice over to English. Now, general, increase the time to give commendations to other players after finishing certain activities. That's nice. Honestly, I don't really understand why you get locked out. Like, I get locked out, and then I'm not allowed to actually give out combinations. Hopefully though, with this time extension, you can do so. Now move the Legend Lost Sector Solo and the Legend Lost Sector Solo Flawless requirement from Guardian Rank 7 to now Rank 8. Move the Master Lost Sector Solo and Master Lost Sector Solo Flawless requirements from Guardian Rank 9 to now Rank 10. Damn it, Bungie, why do you do this? It's okay to make Guardian Ranks hard. Note, players will keep their earned progress after these Lost Sector requirements move to the higher rank. Guys, this weekend, we're gonna be talking about Guardian Ranks. This is gonna be a huge topic for us because I think it's a big deal. I know some people are like, Cross, it's just a number over your Guardian. What does it matter? It's the ultimate flex. It really, really is, guys. And in my opinion, Guardian ranks should be hard, but we'll dive into that another time. Now back to the TWAP. This week at Bungie, happy TWAP's Day, Guardians. This week we're back with quite a bit of Crucible information, some changes to Guardian ranks, and more. First up, we want to give you a little refresher of what we talked about last week. TLDR of last week's TWAP. We got to celebrate the world's first race winners. Art of Life All Developer Insight video, shared updates to commendations and guardian ranks, and exotic quest arrived. Trials of Osiris came back, Iron Man updates and rewards, and updates from the Destiny player support team. Also our movie of the week and art of the week picks. Now here's what's going to be coming today. Tribute to Lance Reddick, aka Zavala. Crucible blog, TLDR. Raid Master and Challenge mode starts next week. Wow! I didn't know it was that close. Guardian rank updates, Destiny player support updates, and the movie of the week and art of the week picks. Now first, Lance Reddick. On Friday, we all learned the tragic news of Lance Reddick's passing at the age of 60. As a commander of Zavala, the stalwart commander of the Vanguard, Lance brought to life a character who has become virtually synonymous with destiny itself. For nearly a decade, guardians around the world have found purpose and comfort in Zavala's presence, bolstered by the unmistakable voice so full of strength, serenity, and nobility. The tributes that have poured in for Lance have been overwhelming. From endless heartfelt messages on social media to impromptu gatherings of respect in Zavala's corner of the tower overlooking the last city. As an actor, musician, gamer, and family man, the passion Lance brought to things he loved was reflected in the eyes and hearts of all who loved him. For now, we will honor his presence through his performances yet to come in the game, and in the memories that will last us a lifetime. We are deeply saddened by his passing, but so thankful for the time we spent together. And our thoughts are with his friends and loved ones. Thank you for everything, Lance. We will miss you. Guys, he was an exceptional voice actor for Zavala. We've seen him in so many different shows, movies, but what was so amazing about Lance was that he didn't just voice 
voice a main character inside of Destiny. He played Destiny. He was a Destiny player. And matter of fact, just the night before he passed, he had been playing Destiny. I'm not sure what the story is going to be next year with Final Shape, or even if Bungie has time to deviate from what they already have set. Who knows? Lance could have already recorded his last voice lines for Zavala. Considering we have characters dropping left and right, perhaps we were going to be losing Zavala all along. Either way it goes, I hope we have some way in the tower to immortalize him, whether it's something there next to Kate's statue, or just retiring Zavala to his office just to live out for the rest of Destiny's days. Now, did you see our graphs? Yesterday, we released our Life All Crucible update blog post, and we are going to repost all 5,000 words here, but here's a summary of everything that we covered. Updates to how maps and game modes are weighted, matchmaking adjustments, and an explanation of fireteam matchmaking, competitive matchmaking, and how skill ratings work, future competitive rewards and quality of life updates, and upcoming Iron Banner and Trials of Osiris plants, as well as new and returning game modes. Now, if you want to dive into the rest of the blog, you can read them here. Guys, we've actually made a video on this. It is a very, and I mean very long video, but lots of big changes coming to PvP. Reward structures for things like Trials of Osiris, most notably Mercy granting you two losses instead of just one, as well as the removal of Flawless Pool. Now, Raid Master Mode and Challenge Rotation starts next week. It's time, Guardians. Raid Weekly Challenges are here. Now, Raid Master Difficulty offers a higher challenge and greater rewards, including armor with a weekly rotating stat focus. The weekly challenge adds an optional hidden objective to one encounter each week that, when completed, grant extra loot. On normal difficulty, they drop double rewards. When cleared on master difficulty, they reward an adept raid weapon. As noted in the previous article, enhancing master root of nightmare adept weapons will be possible, allowing the traits that rolled on the weapon to be upgraded, and this capability will not be immediately available when the master raid launches and will arrive in a mid-season patch. The raid adept weapons you have acquired prior to this patch will still be able to be enhanced, so you want to avoid throwing out any god rolls. That's right, guys. Don't get rid of anything. Keep your adept raid weapons. You will be able to enhance them once this goes live in that mid-season patch. Now, before Master Difficulty releases, we wanted to talk about two issues pertaining to Root of Nightmares. The first being Nezirak's behavior. Sometimes, Nezirak doesn't always respond to players when they are standing in a Well of Radiance. In a future update, we will be updating this behavior, which in turn should make Nezirak feel more like the final god of pain. While it is our philosophy to avoid making dramatic tuning changes to an activity once it's live, we feel it's better to address the responsiveness of the boss and accept that it may alter current strategies and increase the level of challenge. AKA, Nezirak is about to jump on that pillar and bonus all. Thank you! Now, the second issue we like to discuss is around the jump pads that can be found throughout Root of Nightmares, specifically in the second encounter scission. Now, the jump pads are a tool to help players cross large areas while allowing players to use Strand, if they like, to circumvent using the jump pads. Now, we've noticed that players with higher frame rates, usually above 80 frames per second, but not below 60 frames per second, could be unintentionally killed or almost killed by using the jump pads. We're investigating a change to address that issue in an upcoming release. Yeah, there are times where that jump pad just sends me straight down into the abyss. It's wild how much inside of Destiny frame rate affects things. By the way, we're going to be doing the Master Raid next week on launch. If you want to come by our stream, I am super hyped to get some Adept loot. Again, can you imagine that God rolled Rufus, but Adept, and then on top of that, enhanced traits? Ah! Now, Guardian Ranks updates. As we watch new and veteran players alike work through the Guardian ranks since Limefall's launch. We realized that the legendary and master loss sector objectives were placed a bit too early in their progression. In today's update, we've moved both the solo completion and solo flawless objective up to higher Guardian ranks so that fewer players will hit the same bottleneck at rank 6. Now, legend loss sector Guardian rank objectives have been moved from rank 7 to now 8, and master loss sector Guardian rank objectives have been moved from 9 to 10. Now, combined with last week's reduction to commendation targets in rank 7 through 11, these changes will make for a smoother progression path for everyone through the Guardian rank system. We're also working on a broader rank remix in the near future to improve the process even further. Again, Bungie, make Guardian ranks hard. This needs to be the ultimate flex. Like, I don't really believe doing a Legend Lost Sector solo and then flawlessly is overly difficult. Just saying, guys. Some of you are gonna be like, Cross, that's toxic. And to you, I say, get good! Now, a number of known issues. One of the interesting ones here is that we are investigating an issue causing players to be unable to join competitive crucible matches after their in-game suspension is scheduled to expire. Players affected by this issue can resolve it by playing a match of competitive crucible with an alternate character. Interesting. So guys, if you get locked and if you're still locked out, jump on another character, play comp, and then jump back on your main. All right, Guardians, there we have it for this week's TWA. We've seen some chat on socials around this week's story mission, so if you haven't jumped in, we highly recommend knocking that out. We also know that there have been some impactful moments in-game and in real life in many corners of our world recently. Please be sure to take care
care of you and your mental health. If you need resources for anything that might feel a bit too heavy, we have a list on our mental health blog posts. Stay crafty, Sam. All right, guys, that is your 12 for this week. By the way, we will be doing raids all weekend long with viewers. I know some of you have already redeemed some runs. If you got enough eggplants, come on by, jump in our stream. I feel like most people already know the mechanics of the raid, but even if you don't, that's no problem. We'll explain them. We'll talk about them. That way, everyone's up to speed before Master Raid next week. Well, fellas and ladies, thank you all for coming and watching. And as always, slap that like button like your mama told you right.